a shout of praise as you take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Everyone excited today in the presence of the Lord, shout the Lord and say amen. Lift up your right hand and appreciate him for what we have seen so far. Psalm 68, verse 19, very, very quickly. Blessed be the Lord who daily loaded us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. He said, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Say the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Speaking on the subject, making the most of a new season. Making the most of a new season. Making the most of a new year making the most of a new phase our objective is to understand what it takes to maximize new seasons and phases of life every day arrives with a load of benefits. That means every week arrives with a load of benefits. Every month arrives with a load of benefits. Every year arrives with a load of benefits from the Lord. He daily loaded us with benefits. Means he yearly loads us with benefits. There is a divine package or budget for every new season of life. For every new year. A divine budget. A divine package. I'm sure you know that the kingdom of God is wiser than the kingdom of men. If the governments of nations will have budget for their citizens every year, the government of the kingdom is wiser. The point is, it is one thing for heaven to have a package or a budget. It's another thing for us to access that package or to benefit from that package. So many people pass through the year and they come out of the year as if God didn't have any plan for them that year. They enter the year, exit the year, with nothing traceable. It shall not be so this year in the name of Jesus. I prophesy to somebody here. Every package of benefit that heaven has for you. In 2022. You shall receive in the name of Jesus. Everything Jehovah has ordained and designed. To release for you this year. No devil shall divert it. If you believe that shall the Lord say amen. What do you do to make the most 
of this new year, of this new season? What do you do to make the most? What do you do so that the year does not end like other years for some people? What do you do? Number one. That is, what do you do to access all that God has for you? Number one, identify what to thank God for in the previous year. Identify what to thank God for, especially in the previous year. The earth is programmed to yield her increase for those who understand the language of praise and thanksgiving. The earth is programmed to yield her increase for those who understand the language of praise and thanksgiving. Psalm 67 verse 5 to verse 7. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Let the people praise thee. Let all the people give you thanks. Then the earth is under the mandate to surrender what has been packaged into it for, for, for me. What is God saying? He said, I want you to thank me. I want you to praise me for what I have done for you before. For the changes you have experienced. For the turnaround of story. He said, when you do that, you don't need to beg me. The air to respond to your thanks. The air to respond to your praise. The governments, the systems, the institutions, they will come under the pressure of releasing to you what is yours. I prophesy to someone here, as you proceed in thanksgiving, as you proceed in praise, as you proceed in appreciation, every man, every woman, every system, every organization, holding what is packaged for you in this year, they shall come under pressure. They shall lose their peace and lose their sleep and lose their rest until what is yours enters your hands. If you believe that, shout the loudest. Amen. Identify what to thank God for. Identify the gift of life. Identify the gift of health. Identify the gift of supplies. Identify the fact that the devil could not succeed against you in the year that just passed. Thank God for them. Then the earth shall yield her increase. In John chapter 6, verse 11 and in verse 12, when Jesus gave thanks, the bread multiplied, the resources exploded, Identify what to thank God for. Am I communicating? Somebody say amen. Number two. This is a very serious point. Identify what to put behind you. Identify what to put behind you. Identify your posteriority. what to put behind you. Paul the Apostle said in Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 to 14 Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind and then reaching forth to those things which are behind, which are before. I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Listen, to access what is ahead of you, there are things to put behind you. If you are going to gain access to what is ahead of you, there are things that you will have to put behind you. Hmm.
in Genesis chapter 13 verse 15, when God saw, all right, from verse 14, and the Lord said to Abraham, after Abraham has put Lot behind him, lift up your eyes from the place where thou art northward, southward, eastward, and westward. All the land which you see, I will give you. There are things God cannot give you until some things are put behind you. Hello? Am I communicating? It may be an activity of life that you may put by. It may be an action. It may be a business type. It may be a relationship, a connection, an association like Lot and Abraham. I am talking about things that took your time, that took your energy, that took your resources, that took your attention, that took your thought without adding nothing to your life. What did Lord add to Abraham's life? Nothing. He engaged him in strife rather. I am talking of activities. I am talking of actions. It may be a business type. It may be a relationship, an association, a connection. All that it did was to take your time. It did all that it did was to take your energy, take your resources, occupy your attention, occupy your thought, and yet added nothing to you. At times, left left you in regrets. He says, "Put them behind. Otherwise, what I have packaged for this year can never enter your hand." Abraham could not see his lot until he put back lot. Listen to me, my brothers and sisters. Someone said only a madman will be doing the same things and expecting a different result. You do the same things over and over and expect a different result. This man that I call my friend, what has he added to my life? This place I have been living and squatting all these years, how has it moved me forward? This is the direct word of God for somebody here today. He said there, there is something you must do differently if you are going to change your story in 2022. There is something you are going to do differently. Don't respect anybody enough to allow them temper with your destiny. Did you hear what I said? Don't, don't respect anybody enough and don't be sentimental about any association, connection, location, about anything enough to allow them temper with your destiny. There are things you must put behind you if you are going to lay hold on what is ahead of you. Somebody say, I hear. I prophesy to somebody here, every activity, every association, every action, every connection, every investment, every kind of thing around your life that is stopping you from accessing what belongs to you in destiny and in this year. I decree Jehovah disconnect you now from this aimless activities in the name of Jesus. So those things you put behind, they are called your posteriority. They are the opposite of your priority. Hallelujah. Identify what to thank God for. Identify what to put behind you in this new year and in this new season. And I said it might be an action. It might be an activity. It might be an association. It might be a relationship. It might be a habitation. It might be a cohabitation. You are living with a man that has not married you. I can assure you clearly that is that is that is an enemy of of getting married correctly and anointedly. It's an enemy permanently. A habitation that you may you, you must disconnect from. Number three, identify what to put. Before you. 
Identify what to put before you. Identify what to put in front of you. What should I put before me? Identify what to put before you. What to put in front of you. We call it your priority for the year. Call it your central focus. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25 to verse 26. The Bible says, let your eyes look right on. And let your eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet. And let all your ways be established. Focus. 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 Is the secret of fire. Listen to the things I'm about to say. Focus determines finding. Somebody must be focused before something can be found. What belongs to you in the year cannot be found in the climate of distraction. They cannot be found until you are brutally focused. I have said it like this. What you define determines what you can find. To define it is to find it. Also, to define it is to discover it. If you can define it, you can discover it. Also, if you can define it, God can deliver it. For all the land which thou seest, what you can define, to thee will I give it. Somebody may say, before this year is over, I trust God to win 1,000 souls. And before this year is over, I trust God to have a turnover of nothing less than $1 million. You have a spiritual focus. You have a business focus. You have a spiritual focus. You have, you have a career focus. You have a spiritual goal. You have a career goal. Before this year is over, I trust God to build at least five churches. Before this year is over, I trust God to step into the billions range. Am I communicating at all? You have a spiritual focus. You have a career focus. You have a spiritual goal. You have a, you have a, you have a business goal. You have a spiritual goal. You have a, you see, He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. There are so many people who are asking, uh, I want to build a house in Abuja, another house in Lagos, another house in Paris, another house in this and that. And God said, okay, you want to build all those houses? What will you do for me? What will you do for my kingdom? And he says, so you don't have any plan for my kingdom. Let me see how far you can go with your plans. Am I communicating? But if you can define it, then God can cause you to find it. Again, you have a spiritual focus, a spiritual goal, then you have a career goal. You have a spiritual focus, then you have, then you have a business, go- a business focus. You have, you have, you have uh, 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 a spiritual focus, you have a ministry focus. How do you make the most of it here? Number one, identify what to thank God for. Number two, identify what to put behind you. Number three, identify what to put before you. Number four, identify what worked that need to be worked again and again. Identify the things that worked. That need to be worked again and again. Do you understand me now that? There are things that succeeded last year. There are things that, that, that worked, that did well. That must be worked again and again. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and in verse 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58. The Bible said, Therefore my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, so be up. Steadfast means be, be, be consistent, be on duty. Just keep at it, keep at it. Unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 
Just keep at it. Just keep at it. Just keep at it. I read some time ago that nothing succeeds like excess. There is a connection between success and excess. And we are talking about excess of the right thing. Excess of prayer. Excess of worship. Excess excess, excess so you, you don't just do it you do it again and again and again Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 verse 42 they were daily they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers they continued daily they continued daily and by the time you reach verse 47 there was already an explosion and they were praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved somebody say amen is anybody getting anything here say loud amen I like you to understand that continuity is the way to explosivity. If anything must explode, somebody must persist. Continuity is the secret of explosivity. Explosiveness is the secret of it. Do you remember what happened some time ago when the king of Israel came to Elisha? And he said um, there was going to be a battle. I think that was Second Kings chapter thirteen. And he, and, and, and he said the enemies have come. He said, "Open the window and fire the arrow." And the king, you remember the king? He fired one, two, three, and stopped. And the king of Israel, Elijah, the prophet, said, "What's wrong with you? Why did you stop at the third time?" He said, now you will defeat the enemy three times and that's all. And they will start dealing back with you. He said, you would have continued until you finish them. Never be prematurely satisfied with any level of result, with any level of success. Refuse to be prematurely satisfied. Refuse to agree that you have succeeded. Just keep, I tell people, I say, until you see Jesus face to face, there is still one realm of success. There is still one level of impact. There is still one level of result until you see him face to face. Refuse to be prematurely satisfied. When you arrive too soon, you have arrived too small. Don't let people clap for you who are meant to be starting. Don't let people celebrate you into obscurity. Don't let people praise you into irrelevance. In Africa, if you do something small, they give you two thousand title. A diggy 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 dig. One of so and so and so tribe. That is, you have arrived. Well, I'm not against any of this kind of thing, but I'll be against it if it is occultically involved. But don't let anybody tell you you have. You have finished when God is saying you haven't started. Whether it is on your destiny journey, whether it is on, in your career journey, whether it is in your ministry, in your business life, don't let anybody convince you. When we were two years old in ministry, some journalists came to us and they said, this ministry succeeded so fast. Can you tell us the secret of your success? Two years old, they were one. And truly, at the, when we were one year, the sanctuary we used in the real one at age one had five canopies outside that had overflow, little canopies. By the second year, it was exploding. And they came and said, what is the secret of your success? Journalist. And I said to them, we have not started. You are asking that we have succeeded. In my mind, I said, how do you tell a two-year-old child to tell you how he succeeded? At doing what? We're only two years as a church. I told them, we have not started. When we start, I will let you know. I have not let them know yet. <laughs> hey! Look at your neighbor. Say you have not yet started. You are just rehearsing to start. 
Tell somebody you are just rehearsing to start. Don't let anybody convince you that you have started. This should kill every, please take your seat. It should kill every trace of complacency. It should kill every trace of early arrival mentality. That the Geo said, he had a, 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 a teacher. Once they were getting C, he said, your mates are getting B, you are here getting C in mathematics. Then they began to get B. He said, your mates are getting A, you are, you are here getting they began to get, get B. Your mates are getting A, you are here getting B. Then they began to get, they walked out and began to get A. He said, your mates are getting A plus, you are here getting A. Then they struggled until they got the A plus. What will you say against that? Say, your mates are in the university, you are here, say. <laughs> your mates are in the university, you are here talking of A plus. You should be in the, you see, Anywhere you are, there is another level higher. I prophesy to you today, you will go to that higher level. Your journey will not be arrested at a low level. If you believe that, shout the loudest, amen. Identify what worked so that you can try and work it again and again. That was number Four. I like you to walk on this screen so I can see everything together in one screen. Number four. Number five. Identify what worked but need to be improved. It worked but need to be improved. To be improved upon. Identify what worked but that need to be improved upon. That is, if you want to take the results to another level. It's done. I wonder why you, it took you a long time to get it done. Identify what work that need to be improved upon. How many of you know that when God told Moses, when the children of Israel needed water, what did God tell Moses to do? To st strike the rock. Did it work? Did it work? It worked. How do, how do we know it worked? Don't be afraid. You won't fail the exam. Talk. Water came out of the rock, right? Water came out of the rock and they drank. It worked. But when next they needed water, what did God say? The, does it mean the other one didn't work? No, the second one is less energy. Just minimize the energy and get the same result. <laughs> now, there are other dimensions to it which we will not talk about now because it has redemption implications. The smiting of the rock is the crucifixion of Christ, and he was not meant to be crucified twice. So you can't hit him twice. By the first, by his crucifixion, the next time we are to deal with him, whatever we, we need, we receive from him without him being crucified again. Because the Bible said the rock that followed them was Christ. But that is, God is saying that, I am not saying what you have been doing is not working well. But I want you to reduce energy. I want you to spare time. Spare resources. So you can move faster. That's the mystery of it. Is God speaking to anybody at all? So this thing worked. But there can be a better approach to work it. This thing is successful. But if I think small. And I can connect with the mind of God. I will find a way in which it can work better. Hallelujah. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. In those days, when we were young, younger, small, 
there were vehicles they used to wind with hand. Am I communicating? Is that same moblet? Motorized bicycle. It doesn't exist anymore. It has been replaced with motorcycle. There are several things. You used to have canoe. It still exists, but you have now motorized boats. That is, you spare the energy. That was Numbers chapter 20 verse 8. When God told Moses to speak to the rock. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 6, the disciples were ministering welfare before, and it was working to some extent. But a time came when there was so much complaint and grumbling, and they had to change approach. What did they do? They identified people, if you read it, Acts chapter 6 from verse 1 all the way to verse 6, identified people that could handle the welfare in a way that the stress would be reduced, the murmuring will be reduced, the grumbling will be reduced, and the result will be multiplied, and, and they did that exactly. And then they said the apostles, and then in verse 7, everything exploded, and the word of God exploded. Number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. It was the same, the same outcome they wanted, but the they followed a different approach. Am I communicating at all? A different approach is the answer to persistent reproach. When what you are doing is, is baptizing you with reproach. Uh, you are getting results, but you are getting it with a lot of stress. You are getting it with a lot of um, struggle. You are getting it with a lot of pain. If the approach becomes different, the reproach becomes arrested. I prophesy to somebody here today how to do it differently and get a drastic result. How to do it differently and get a change of story. How to do it differently and get a very unusual result. The Lord shall show that to you in this season. In the name of Jesus. If you are saying amen, shout the Lord and say amen. If you are saying amen, shout the Lord and say amen. If you are saying amen, shout amen at the top of your voice. Did anybody get anything at all from that? Are you, are you, did, you, did you get anything here this morning? So shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. Number six now. Identify what God would want you to do. Or focus on more this year. What, now all the things we have said are all very, very good, but what would you, is there something you want me to pay attention to this year, Lord? That's God now. That read, now you have, you have set out the visions, you have done all the things humanly possible, but Lord, is there anything you want me to pay attention to this year? What will you have me do? What do you want me to emphasize on? What are you saying to me? That was the question Paul the Apostle asked on the road to Damascus in Acts chapter 9 verse 6. And he trembled and astonished said, Lord, what will you have me to do? And the Lord said to him, Arise. Your screen is back to how it was. Arise and go into the city and it shall be told you what you must do. Arise. Somebody say amen. Lift your right and say, Oh Lord, what will you have me to do? What are you saying that I am not hearing? What do you want me to emphasize? What do you want to show me? Am I communicating at all? God has something to say. God has something to say. Listen, listen. Pay close attention for God. 
Is there no FCS? Nifes SU around? God has. Listen, listen, and pay close attention for God has something. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, listen. Pay close attention for God. Sing it one more time. God. Hallelujah. God. Listen, listen. And pay close attention. For God has something to say. Somebody say it loud, amen. What are the radio stations in Abuja here? Cool FM, Hot FM, Astro Radio, Ray Power. All right. All of them are not working. All of them are not working. They are working. Why are you not hearing them? They are talking now. Are you hearing them? Because you have to prepare, position, get their equipment, tune it, and hear it. Don't blame, don't say God is not talking. He's, talk, he's over talking. He's talking, sir. You say, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded, death, death, death is continuous. Proceeded. It proceeded, it is proceeding, it will continue to proceed. Take your seat. Well, you cannot hear the radio now because you are hearing the message now. Take your seat. So, but definitely God is saying something. Maybe you will say, pay closer attention to that. Your last child. This year. Maybe you will say, pull out that investment. Otherwise, it's going to crash. Maybe you will say, you will just say something. One day, somebody came and introduced some people to us, somebody to us and say, they are dealing in, in um, I think, uh, what do you call it now? Stocks. And that um, if there is any excess money lying down, instead of it just lying down, you can give it to them. So we gave them some from church. Just help us put it there. And then one day the Holy Spirit said, move it now. So we'll move it out today. Tomorrow everything crashed. Everything. People lost billions. Hundreds of millions. It's just under 24 hours. That is possible to suffer drastic losses. Not hearing can cost a person his life. One man was driving on the road in America. You know that you can drive for 19 hours in America. Was driving a team from Los Angeles to um, New York or something. And was praying about the journey he was going to take. The more he prayed, the more he lacked peace. But he prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. No peace. Then he decided the journey will not hold. The people say, come, 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 come. He say, I can't come. Ticket is already bo booked. This is your flight number. This is the aircraft you are following. The meet, everybody is set. Meeting is set. People are waiting for you. He said, I cannot come. Because the Holy Ghost couldn't allow him to go. The same flight they booked him on. Under another 24 hours crashed. 123 people on board. None survived. 
He was meant to be on board. The Holy Ghost could not allow him to move. He did not move. He could have died and still gone to heaven as a child of God, but without fulfilling his destiny on earth because he couldn't hear God. Hallelujah. You will not be wasted. 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 Lift up your right and say in the name of Jesus. I cannot be wasted. I cannot be wasted. I shall fulfill my destiny. I shall fulfill the purpose of God for my life. Am I communicating at all? What will you have me do about my personal work? What are you saying to me in my finances? God may give you an instruction to move your giving to another level. Move your giving to another level. I have shifted myself in levels before. That is, my income was 10 naira and I'm paying the tithe of 1 naira and I want my income to move to 100 naira and instead of paying the tithe of what I have now, I, began, I tithed on what I was expecting to come. That is Satan, you can't keep me here. There is where I belong. And shifted there by force. <laughs> Am I communicating at all? Are you hearing anything here this morning? What about my business? What are you saying? What about my personal relationship? What are you saying? There are some of us, the Lord may give you more, more instruction this year. Increase in evangelism. Increase in kingdom service. You are too busy with a lot of work. I want you to serve me more this year. I want you to give me more of your time this year. And God may ask you to do that. You shall not fail. What is the blessing? Finally, as I round off, this is like 6A now. What is the blessing of divine instruction, divine direction? If God speaks to you, number one, determination of frustration. There is determination of frustration. Determination of frustration. Peter toiled all night, caught nothing. But when he had God, frustration ended. Number two, abundance of provision. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. When God gives you direction or instruction, he leads you into abundance. He leads you into plenty. Number three, the exceeding of expectations. When you receive divine instruction and you move by divine direction, all expectations are exceeded. The exceeding of expectations. They are exceeded. Peter was trying to get just a handful of fishes. But when he listened to instruction, what he saw was beyond what he bargained for until he had to call others to assist him with the breakthrough. The exceeding of expectations. I prophesy to someone here in the year 2022, every trace of frustration around your life is arrested in the name of Jesus. In the year 2022, every trace of frustration around your life is arrested in the name of Jesus.
in the year 2022, I prophesy the abundance of provision in your direction. In the year 2022, all expectations concerning your life shall be exceeded. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest say amen. Number three, number four, is the establishment of satisfaction. When you follow instruction, you end with satisfaction. When you follow instruction, you end with fulfillment. That is, I mean, it's not possible to be unfulfilled following God's voice. The establishment of satisfaction. And number five, the achievement of elevation. The voice of God moves people up. It takes you up. In Galatians chapter 2 and in verse 2, Paul the apostle said, And I went up by revelation. 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 The achievement of elevation. The work of God, the word of God, and the voice of God, it moves you, it changes your level. If you are going to change level, if you are going to move from level to level, you are going to move from dimension to dimension, you are going to move from glory to glory, you must be ready to hear what God is saying. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a louder amen. If you put yourself under pressure and congratulations, the month of January is our month of divine direction and vision. Give the Lord the praise. The meaning of that is this month we shall be going into the nitty gritty of why I need to hear from God, the profit of hearing from God, we are going into the nitty gritty of how God speaks. How do I know that God is talking to me? Because he talks to us in different ways. And for some people, because they don't understand that it is God talking, they are not aware he is the one speaking. How to modulate the frequency. How to set yourself in, in, a, in a conducive climate. Because it is not to everybody God can speak. How to set that setting. Bible said the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet, which means the prophet can tune his spirit and receive on the spot. Yeah. I, t- I tell my children, I said, yesterday we were talking about song, song receiving and song writing. At the dining table, we were just talking. And on the spot, I said, okay, let me give you an example. I then began to worship in the spirit and zoom. The first line, two lines. He said, wait a minute. <laughs> Mommy, Dr. Mr. Nature, I started to take a phone to record what was coming on the spot. I said, okay, look at the melody line now and look at the, look at the spirit tune now. So just listen well so you can receive the word that matches this melody. It was too drastic for them. <laughs> people say, or some people say, oh, my own I receive when I sleep and I dream. Or oh, others, when I'm on the keyboard, and so on. So, there is a way in which you can tune the frequency, the climate around you, and to receive. And this year, everyone whose ear is deaf, it shall be opened. Everyone whose spiritual eye is blind, it shall be opened. Can you stand on your feet and shout the loudest say amen? Everyone whose ear is deaf, the ear shall be opened. Everyone whose spiritual eye is blind, the eye shall be opened. It is your year. 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 
And if it is good, it's mine. If it is good, it is yours. If it is good, Psalm 84 verse 11. The Lord God, please remain standing everyone, is our son and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Somebody say amen. Will you walk uprightly? That is your final condition. Walk in uprightness will give you access to your inheritance this year. Number six was what? Number seven, determine to walk uprightly. Determine. He said, no good thing will he withhold. He has loaded this year with good things. But it is only for those who walk uprightly. Not those who walk crookedly. From beginning of church till today, the money of this church belongs to the church. And the one that enters my hand, a bulk of it also flows into the church. God is not afraid to entrust because he knows one sees he cannot miss one dime. There are people who have brought offering to me. And I say, what is this? I'm trusting God for healing. And I'm bringing you prophet of it. No, 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 no. You are trusting God for healing. You are giving me prophet of it. I can't heal you. Give me to the one who can heal you. I don't even care how much is in the envelope. If I don't touch what is not mine, no devil can keep what is mine. Did you hear what I just said? If you made up your mind not to touch what is not yours, whether it belongs to a friend, whatever is not yours, the money that is not yours, the resources that is not yours, the is for government, the one that is for your institution, the one that is for your friend that he didn't give you. If you decide not to touch what is not yours, no devil can keep what is yours. I would say concerning Job, he was an upright man, not a crooked man. There are many of us, we need to change the way we do business so that God can entrust you with massive resources. Somebody say amen. amen. Stand up on your feet, everybody. We went for a crusade somewhere and we saw people selling bangles or wristbands with our picture inside that they printed and manufactured by themselves to come and sell. And we don't function like that. That didn't authorize you to sell my picture. If you, are, if you are interested in selling pictures, sell your own. If it is some people that God gave the privilege of this kind of thing, they would have sold the church since. Everybody will be, will be under, under a mandate to pay so and so a man before you can even, even be prayed for. Am I communicating? I want us to make up our mind today, this year, Every financial deal shall be straight. Every contract deal shall be straight. Every business I, I, I do shall be straight. And then see how God will shock you. Somebody gets set because heaven is ready for you. The angels are ready for you. Supernatural supply is ready for you. Are you ready to receive? Lift your hands and begin to receive. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your voice. Honor him. Adore him. Worship him. Glorify him. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Agayate se ke peke la gaya da 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 da. Lite se pereta sakata. Lift your voice and honor him. Lift your voice and worship him. Lift your voice and adore him. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Father, we give you the adoration. Father, we give you the worship. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' precious name. Lift your hands high and pray this prayer with me. Say after me. Say, Father, Father I, thank you I thank you for the gift of life, for the gift of, life. For the gift of health, for the gift of health. In, 2021. in 2021. Father, Father the gift of life, gift of life. And, health and health and supplies in 2021. In 2021. I, thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord, because you are revealing to me the things I must put behind me. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord, because you are showing me the things I must put in front of me. Father, I thank you because you are opening my eyes to see the thing that worked, that must be reworked again. I thank you, Lord, because you are showing me where I need to change things and move to a higher level. I thank you, Lord, because in this season, you shall open my ears to hear you. Open my ears to hear you. Open my ears to hear you. Open my understanding to know what you are saying. In the name of Jesus. Say, Father. I receive the grace. Say it loud. I receive the grace to walk in uprightness. I receive the grace to walk uprightly. I receive the grace to walk uprightly. I receive that grace to walk uprightly. I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands and lift your voice and speak to God. Speak to God. I receive that grace. I receive that grace. I receive that grace to walk uprightly. I receive grace to walk uprightly. I receive that grace. Masheko galaya tasatalala. Mekasakokola baradana Thank you, Master. I receive the grace. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, lift up your hands everywhere you are. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. I live for you alone. Every moment I'm away, every moment I'm away. Have your way, Lord. Every body sees that I give you my heart. I give you my soul. For you alone, every moment I'm awake, every moment I'm awake, every moment I'm awake, I want you to pray two prayers very endlessly in the next three minutes thereabout. First prayer is, Lord, please help me to hear what you are saying. Help me to see what you are showing. Help me not to miss out on any instruction that is needed for me this year. Are you going to do that? Lift your hands and your voice and say, Father, help me, Lord, to hear what you are saying. Help me, Lord, to see what you are showing. Say, help me, Lord, not to miss any instruction you are giving me this year. Help me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and speak to God.
in the name of Jesus. Number two, say after me, say, Father, I receive the grace to walk uprightly. I receive the grace to walk in line with your will, with your purpose, to walk in accordance with your plan. Open your mouth and speak to God. Jesus. Lift up your hands. There are people without a doubt that are here this morning saying to me, Pastor, and all over our locations around the world, Pastor, I want to make my ways right with Jesus. I want today to mark a new day. I want Jesus to be Lord over my life. I want help from above. I want to be born again. I want to be forgiven my sins. Anywhere you are, pick your Bibles, pick your bags, and you will rush to the front here. And the front of the altar is where you are. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to start this year with God. They are already coming. Don't be the last to come. Don't even wait until I finish. Carry your Bibles, carry your bags, and rush to the front. I'll give you the count of 15. From the gallery where you are, you can come forward as well. And anywhere you are, in the overflows, in all locations, quickly rush. God bless you. I'll give you the count of 15. One. Take something faster. Two. The rest of us can take our seats while they come forward. Communion can also step forward. Hold your way, Lord. Everybody sing. I my heart. I my soul. I for you. Every moment on my way. Everybody sing. Keep coming. You want the yoke of sin broken. Bound with tobacco. Bound with drug addiction. Bound with masturbation. Lesbianism. Bound by any lifestyle that you know God is not happy with. And you are seated now. Quickly again, join us. You say, I have come out like this before. But your life is not showing that you belong to God and you want to make it right with God. Stand up on your feet. Carry your Bibles and carry your bags and join us. I want to stop gambling. I want to stop drinking. I want to stop smoking. I want to stop lying, cheating. 419. That kind of fraudulent lifestyle. Quickly, I'll give you the count of seven for this one to come forward. Let's go. Lord, I give you my heart. One. I give you my heart. 
Lord Jesus, I come before you today. All right, there are people still coming. Rush forward. All right, say it now. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you today to surrender my life to you. Forgive me my sins, Lord. Today, it is my decision to follow you. No turning back. From today, I go forward ever, backward never. The grace to live for you, I receive it. Thank you, Lord, for helping me. In Jesus' precious name, amen. I pray for you today. I declare the hold of the enemy broken, and I decree today a new day and a new season for you. Help from above is released upon you, and I call it dawn. In Jesus' name. I want to congratulate you. The very first Sunday of the year 2022. Give the Lord a big clap of hand. You came out to make your way right with God. I assure you, your life can never remain the same. It's a new day. It's a harvest of souls. Counselors, please let them be a part of the service. Probably sit right close to where you are going to take them to at the very back right there. And then, so they can be part of the communion and the release of the New Year blessing. I want them to be part of it. God bless you. Congratulations. I'm happy for you. Counselors, this is the first fruit of the year, 2022. Hand them over completely to God and let none of them be lost. Come and see the Lord is good. Come and see the Lord is good. There is nothing in the Lord. Come and see the Lord. Everybody come and see. Everybody, body, 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 come and say, There is nothing, nothing you can go to. Everybody, come and see. Everybody, body, 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 come and see. There is nothing, nothing you can go to. He gave me the truth. He gave me peace of mind. There is nothing it cannot do. Come and see the Lord. Everybody come and see. Everybody, body, 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 come and see. Come and see the Lord. 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 Give the Lord a big clap and a loud shout of praise. In the name of Jesus. The communion and the blessing will be released shortly. But before that happens, there is a slight adjustment in our prayer and fasting schedule. We want to trust that the fast will be done very concentratedly and focusedly. Today, second, so many people are still trying to recover from the season. Some have traveled to places that they have not come out from. I'm sure you, you understand what I'm talking about. You know, most people travel to village and they return back with one pain or the other. 
And they keep on traveling every year. He said, that leg pain followed me from the village. <laughs> and he came back next year. Coupled with the fact that we intend to adequately plan the year before we start the fast. So this week is given to us to recover from last year. And some people are saying thank you already. <laughs> I thought you are very spiritual. I thought you can come wait on the Lord anytime. I say some people are grumbling when we say we are starting fast on the third. <laughs> So the message you heard today, use this week to put it to work, to put to work. One, what do I have to thank God for? Two, what are the things I have to put behind me? Three, what is my focus for 2022? What am I pursuing? What is my priority? Four, what are the things that worked that I need to work again? Five, what are the things that work but I may need to change some approach? Six, what is God saying to me to do with my life this year? And then what area do I need to make adjustment? Use this whole week to make such plan and to recover yourself, especially those who have found themselves in locations that they haven't returned back from yet. And then we start the fast on Monday the 10th. Is that okay? Are you settled like that? All right, so we start the fast on Monday. Then healing and deliverance service also will not be holding this week, but for midweek service, the oil of preservation will hold on Wednesday. This Wednesday, 5 30 p.m., you come with your bottle of oil because um, the devil may not wait till next week, so we have to, <laughs> we have to do the preservation service immediately. <laughs> and for every single one, you are preserved. Even between now and that midweek service you are preserved. So, 5.30 p.m. you come with bottles of oil. In any location where you are around the world, pick your bottles of oil. Communion of escape for this Wednesday. Everything is in the same status like before, before the Christmas. And the next week, we are full blast set for the fast and also set for healing and deliverance service and everything. Somebody who believes is going to be an exciting, explosive year. Shout the loudest. Amen. And so if you have your communion in your hands now, stand up on your feet, hold it up, and then just begin to appreciate God for what he has in mind for you and for us today. By your blood, oh Lord, by your blood, oh Lord, by your blood, oh Lord, by your blood. Oh Lord, by your blood, oh Lord, you set the captives free. By your blood, oh Lord, you set the captives free. Now we are going to give the first offering of the year. Please sit down and let's do that well. Um, we cannot forget the offering of the year. The first offering of the year. Stretch your two hands in front of you as I prophesy upon your hands and I decree that the systems will lose their peace and lose their sleep and lose their rest until what is yours enters your hands. In Jesus' precious name, supernatural supply is your portion. 2022 shall release to you what is what belongs to you in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a shout of praise. You are highly lifted up, Lord. You are highly Pass it very sharply. lifted up, Lord. You are glorious in holiness. You are people, Lord, in praises. You do great and mighty signs and wonders. You are Multiply. 
dry harvest to every giver in the name of Jesus. Pass it on very quickly.